We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who lengthened our lives to witness another blessed month of Ramadan. We praise him subhanahu wa ta'ala for having guided us to fast and to stand the night in prayer. We praise him for enabling us to recite his glorious book and for enabling us to give in his cause. We praise him for guiding us to be in his house, to be in the finest of places on the face of this planet. We praise him for strengthening our resolve to see the month of Ramadan through to the end, which is but moments away. Like every year, many of us notice in ourselves a number of positive changes during the Ramadan. The transformative nature of the month is no coincidence, but intended by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So many of us have made progress in our deen, albeit to varying degrees. We've seen ourselves able to recite more Qur'an daily and or pray more nafl and or give more charity <clears throat> or overcome certain persistent sins or refine our character by ridding ourselves of negative traits and adopting good manners. Now, no one will achieve full marks, so to speak, for every single paper. But the objective is to make a permanent change for the better in at least one aspect of our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we had mentioned before Ramadan. These gains, <clears throat> these gains were not made by accident, nor were they the result of our effort alone. Rather, they were due to a divine assistance, which is specific to this month, specific to Ramadan. In this life, dear brothers and sisters, we are exposed to many dangers which we must navigate in order to succeed in the trial which is living on earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made five fronts like battle fronts which we are exposed to. The first front is the front of the shaitan which is the, our, who is our sworn enemy who will never accept a truce or a peace treaty or a de-escalation. He promised to misguide us and to surround us from every side in order to destroy us. Where he said to Allah, Then I will most surely come to them from in front of them and from behind them and from their left and from their right and from their left and you will find most of them to be unappreciative. Allah aided us in our battle against the shaitan, against this front during the month of Ramadan by chaining up Maradatu shayateen the strongest, the most cunning, the most devious, the most, uh, 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 the most conniving of the shaitans. The second front is a nafsul ammaratu bisu. It is the nafs which is inclined to evil or commands and calls to evil. It is the nafs which does not accept responsibilities and does not accept the rights that are due from it but demands everything that it desires if man obeys the nafs then there are no depths to this to the then there are no limits to the depths that one can sink and so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aided us against the nafs during the ramadan by busying us with fasting during the day and prayer during the night strengthening our resolve and conditioning the nafs to incline towards righteousness rather than towards evil. The third front is companionship. We are social creatures and we are forced to interact with, uh, uh, with those of our own kind. And companions in this life, dear brothers and sisters, are of three kinds. The first is like water, the second is like medicine, and the third is like poison. The companion who is like water is the one whom you cannot live without. The one who guides you and helps you in your religion. The one who teaches you what you do not know and reminds you what you have forgotten and competes and aids you and assists you and advises you. Those are the companions whom you must never turn your eyes away from. Allah Ta'ala said, وَاصْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِيِّ يُرِيدُونَ وَجَهَةِ وَلَا تَعْدُ عَيْنَاكَ عَنْهُمْ Allah Ta'ala, he said, and keep yourself patient 
with those who call upon their Lord in the morning and the evening, seeking his face, his countenance. And let not your eyes pass beyond them. Do not even look away from those friends. Those are the friends whom you cannot live without. The second type of friends, the second companion is the one who is like medicine, whom you only need in your time of necessity. Medicine is not to be taken daily, only when there is a dire need. And so the friend who is like medicine is the one who helps you in your worldly affairs. Any concern that you have, any worry that you have, financial or academic or with housing, these people are the ones whom you seek for your material needs, but you do not accompany at all times. And the third, dear brothers and sisters, the third companion is the one who is like poison. The one who does not help you in your deen or your dunya. And so like poison, it's harmful to you. And he is an enemy whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us to stay away from. Close friends that day will be enemies to each other except the righteous. Allah Ta'ala aided us on this front companionship during the month of Ramadan with these evil companions sleeping during the day and staying up to play during the night. And so we were and so we were spared. We were spared their whispers and their harm. The fourth front is Hududun Nafs, the the nafs desires and whims and wants, which it chases after. Fame, uh, uh, authority, position, high status, to be seen, to be praised, to receive validation from others, to seek vengeance against those who crossed it. And Allah Ta'ala aided us against the nafs's desires during the month of Ramadan by training us to observe patience and self-restraint through the fast which isn't accepted if one does not abandon false speech and deception and argumentation. The fifth front is the dunya itself. Like shade, it never lasts. It fades and it withers. But some people forget this and they feel comfortable in the dunya and assume that they will live within it eternally. And so they think after today, tomorrow is guaranteed. And after this month, there is another. And after this year, there are many years to come. Allah Ta'ala aided us against inclining to the dunya during the month of Ramadan by making us realize that we, by making us realize that the dunya is not the end, but the means. And that we do not need everything within it. We can do without most of it. As the fast has showed us, the objective is not to abandon the dunya entirely but to take it as a zad, as a provision in aid of our pursuit of the next life. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assisted us in the struggle and fight on these fronts during the month of Ramadan. Hence, why worship came to us easily. The challenge now, dear brothers and sisters, is how do we maintain the gains made during the month of Ramadan? Now, it is unlikely that we will sustain the same volume of worship after Ramadan. But we must find a way to preserve the positive changes which we made to our lives. To do so, we must remember why we made these changes during the month of Ramadan. The motives, as we know and as we've mentioned throughout the month and before it, are three. Iman, an ihtisab, and taqwa. Iman, which is faith. What compelled us to stand for long hours, what compelled us to go hungry and thirsty during the day, other than our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that He alone deserves worship, He alone deserves obedience, He alone deserves that sacrifice. Ihtisab, expectation of the reward. Nothing can incentivize us to go through what we have been through, of hungry, of hunger and thirst and sleeplessness other than Allah's promise of his reward. Now, you can do it for the gram for only so long before you get tired and you move on to the next trend. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's reward is the true driver, the true motivator to keep us, to keep us motivated in worship 
after that Ramadan high will inevitably come down. We fasted to attain taqwa. We've been told by Allah's Messenger that Allah has no use for our fast, which is uh, uh, spoiled with deception, with false speech, with argumentation. Now, along the same vein, Allah does not, Allah does not have any use, meaning He does not accept the salah, the prayer of an oppressor, somebody who oppresses his wife, or a woman who oppresses her husband, or somebody who oppresses their children, or their staff at work, or their business partners, etc. There are many forms of oppression. And so taqwa must deter us from returning to the sins which we committed before the month of Ramadan. And if we are able to do that, that is a sign of acceptance from Allah. Taqwa, which is defined as Allah finding you where he commanded you to be and missing you where he prohibited you to be is only attainable if you love what Allah loves and you hate what Allah hates. Now to love what Allah loves and to hate what Allah hates, it means that you have to love Allah more than you love anything else. Allah Ta'ala drew a distinction for us between those who love their desires and those who love Allah. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَتَّخِذُ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنْدَادًا يُحِبُّونَهُمْ كَحُبِّ اللَّهِ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ And yet, among the people are those who take other than Allah as equals to him. Other than Allah can be anything. It can be your boss at work. It can be your own desires, your own whims. It can be the promise made by the shaytan. And yet among the people are those who take other than Allah as equals to him. They love them as they should love Allah. But those who believe are stronger in love for Allah. We disobey Allah because we love ourselves. We love our opinions. We love our desires. And the promises made by others, including the shaytan. But Allah Ta'ala is more worthy of our love than anything. And love has five causes. The first is beauty. We love everything that is beautiful. Whether it be in nature, animals, or people, or, uh, 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 or architecture, or art itself, we are inclined towards beauty. But Allah Ta'ala is the source of all of that beauty. He created everything and it returns to Him. And so Allah Ta'ala, He is the most beautiful. And so He is most worthy of our love. The second reason for love is perfection. We love perfection in nature and technology and we love perfection in people's manners and in their conduct. We love, uh, uh, we love perfection in, uh, 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 in, uh, 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 in language in, and in literature. And who is more perfect than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He, he is the absolute in his perfection. He transcends any notion of imperfection, Jalla Jalaluhu, and so he is most worthy of our love. The third reason for loving is Ihsan, kindness and goodness. We love those who are good and kind to us. We feel indebted to them. But who is more kind and more good to us than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He who created us from nothing and gave us everything. He who guided us to Islam and made us from the best nation, brought forth to mankind. He whose blessings, if counted, can never be enumerated. وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا Is he not then more worthy of our love than anyone else? The fourth reason for love is raja, hope. We love those whom we hope will help us in any capacity. We feel that they're reliable and dependable, and so we place our hopes in them. But no one can be truly relied upon and hoped in except Allah in whose hands are the treasures of the heavens and the earth and the dominion over the temporary world and the final eternal abode he is most worthy of our love the fifth reason for love is relationship why does somebody love their child the infant who may not be beautiful who definitely who definitely is not perfect has learnt no manners yet, cannot speak yet, cannot be hoped in, has got, done no kindness. We love the child because of our relationship to them and who is closer to us than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
who said, وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبَلِ الْوَرِيدِ And we are closer to him, mankind, than his jugular vein. Allah is closer to us than the source of life to our very highest faculty, the faculty of thought. Loving Allah Ta'ala necessitates loving those whom he loves. To love his messengers and his angels. To love his books. To love his sacred sites. To love Mecca and Medina and to love Al-Aqsa. Loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala necessitates loving what he loves and hating what he hates. And that is why the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he taught us the dua, Allahumma habib ilayna al-iman wa zayyinhu fi qulubina wa karrih ilayna al-kufra wal-fusuqa wal-isyan wa ja'alna min al-rashideen. Oh Allah, make us love belief and adorn it, beautify it in our hearts and make hated to us disbelief deviance and rebellion and make us among the rightly guided we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us our deeds and to aid us in maintaining the good deeds that we have that we have cultivated during this month and to make him more and we ask him to make him more love to us than anything else and that he make to us love to us what he loves and make hated to us what he hates أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله على إحسانه والشكر له على توفيقه وامتنانه وأصلي والشكر له على توفيقه وامتنانه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له تعظيما لشانه وأصلي وأسلم على سيد الأولين والآخرين الداعي إلى رضوانه صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه Dear brothers and sisters, we must at the end of the month compile for ourselves a checklist of righteous deeds which we must observe after the month of Ramadan. Deeds which we observed with relative ease during Ramadan but we must maintain after the month of Ramadan. To maintain a portion of fasting every month, be it three days every month, or Mondays and Thursdays, or uh, the, the, at least the first nine days of Dhul Hijjah, or fasting the month of Muharram, as the Messenger وسلم, said, the best fast after the fast of Ramadan is fasting the month of Muharram. Strive to maintain a portion of Qiyam, of praying during the night. We have accustomed ourselves to praying at night for 28 nights so far. Therefore, it is not, it is not a leap to say that we can pray two rak'at before bed and at least to go to bed without, uh, and at least to go to bed uh, 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 after having prayed with. And if we are able to, to wake up in the heart of the night when Allah wa ta'ala descends a descendants which befits his grandeur and his majesty, to call to the people. هل من داع فأستجيب له؟ هل من سائل فأعطيه؟ هل من مستغفر فأغفر له؟ Is there a caller for me to answer? Is there somebody needy for me to give? Is there somebody seeking forgiveness for me to forgive? And so maintain some qiyam in your lives. Do not sever this tie with the night. Strive to maintain your connection with the Qur'an. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala's book, which the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it is the criterion, without jest, whoever among the oppressive abandons it, Allah crushes him. And whoever seeks guidance from other than it, then Allah leaves him to go astray. It is the firm rope of Allah. It is the wise remembrance. And it is the straight path. My dear respected brothers and sisters, continue your khatamat, one khatam after the other, after the month of Ramadan. Do not, do not distance yourself from the book of Allah. Maintain your connection with it. Keep it close by. Keep it in your gatherings. Keep it within reach, on your desk, uh, near your bed. Do not raise it so high on a shelf where you leave it to collect dust out of reach. Maintain your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's book. Allah ta'ala said, فَقَرَأُوا مَا تَيَسَّرَ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ So recite 
of the Quran, whatever is easy for you, and everybody knows their own circumstances, and everybody knows their own time constraints. But do not, do not sever your connection with Allah Tabaraka wa Taala's book, which if which is difficult to maintain. If you have memorized the Quran, revise it, for indeed it flees, as the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, continue to recite the Quran. فَوَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ لَهُوَ أَشَدُّ لَهُوَ أَشَدُّ تَفْصِيلًا لَهُوَ أَشَدُّ لَهُوَ أَشَدُّ تَفْصِيلًا مِنَ الْإِبْرِ فِي عُقُولِهَا He said, maintain your recitation of the Quran, for indeed it runs away, it flees quicker than a camel which is released from its ropes. Whoever is unable to recite the Quran, then listen to the Quran. And there are thousands of reciters online which you find your comfort in. But whatever you do, do not sever your relationship. Do not sever your connection with Allah Tabaraka wa Taala's book. Maintain a connection to Allah Tabaraka wa Taala's houses. These mosques cry after the month of Ramadan when its spaces are found empty. So do not. Do not distance yourself from Allah's houses, which are the most beloved places on earth. And do, not, <clears throat> and do not let yourself be found in the markets all the time, which are the most hated places to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The mosques belong to Allah and he attributed them to himself. And so they have the utmost honor. Maintain your connection to Allah's house. For, though, for one of the seven who is under the shade of Allah Ta'ala's throne on the day when there is no shade but his is a man and a woman of course whose heart is connected to the mosques. <clears throat> Observe as many obligatory prayers as you can and remain sat in your place after the salah if you have time for the angels descend and they continue to make dua Allahumma ghfir lah, Allahumma arhamhu, Allahumma ghfir lah they continue to make dua, oh Allah have mercy on him, oh Allah forgive him, until he loses his wudu. So continue to remain in your place if you have many sins, and you have the time of course to remain in your place. Maintain your adhkar of the morning and the evening. Maintain at least, la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah, lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd, wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir a hundred times during the day and the night. For whoever does so, Allah Ta'ala will make for him, Allah Ta'ala will write for him a hundred rewards and expiate a hundred sins and raise him in rank and raise him in rank and give him the reward of freeing ten slaves and protect him from the shaitan until the evening and continue to send salah and salam upon the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the one who sends salah on him ten times in the morning and ten times in the evening will receive his intercession, his shafa'a on the day of judgment. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Hada wa sallu wa sallimu ala khayri al-anam. Fa inna Allah amarakum bi amrin bada'a bihi bi nafsihi wa thanna bi malaikati qudusihi thumma bikum ayyuhal mu'minun. Fa qala jalla min qa'im. Inna Allah wa malaikatahum yusalluun ala al-nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad. كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين وأعن بفضلك كلمتي الحق والدين اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة